Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about White Dwarfs. Here's actually Sirius B, the closest White Dwarf to us, a star that is just as massive as the Sun, but is compacted into a size of a planet similar to planet Earth. And what we're going to be discussing is the idea of these White Dwarfs having a habitable zone and potentially habitable planets. Anyway, let's talk about the science behind this, and welcome to What The Math. So this is actually based on uh, several um, modern studies from the last few years that talk about the idea of uh, white dwarfs actually still being able to kind of sustain the habitable zone around them. Now, Universe Sandbox, if I were to press the habitable zone button, it would not show anything. The white dwarfs here are not seen as stars. They're basically objects that are um, uh, degenerative matter that is still very hot, but is slowly cooling down with absolutely no nuclear reaction on the inside, which is essentially what white dwarfs are. These very dense objects are um, very mysterious still. There's still quite a lot of things we don't understand about them. But we know for a fact that um, these objects can last for billions of years in their current form. They cool down very, very slowly. And uh, eventually they'll become what's known as black dwarfs. I'm going to try to demonstrate to you what this will look like by uh, trying to turn this off. And essentially cool this thing down without really changing anything else. Let's see if we can do it uh, by maybe lowering the temperature and the luminosity. And eventually it will become very, very dark, very, very black. And at that point, they will not no longer be able to be detected by anything. It will be essentially practically invisible because it's going to be a very dark very mysterious object. Now, we know that there is very likely none of these just yet. Because it takes so long for White Dwarf to reach this Black Dwarf stage that you see right here, um, it's very likely that none of them have reached it yet because it takes at least several billion years, or actually no, not just several billion years, several hundreds of billions of years, and possibly even trillions of years, which is much, much uh, shorter than the total age of the universe. So we don't think these exist yet. But we know also that one day our own beautiful sun is also going to become a white dwarf. As a matter of fact, in Universe Sandbox, if you decide to add some age to your sun, like for example, if I um, go under the age here and make it 12 billion years old, and then reset it, and then reset it again, it's actually going to become a supernova remnant, which is not really true because it's not going to go supernova, but it is going to become um, a white dwarf about 567 Jupiters in mass, or about 54% of the original mass, because the outer shell will have been thrown away as a kind of a planetary nebula. Now, so these are the white dwarfs, our sun will become one, and maybe at that point, it will still have a kind of um, habitable zone around it. So like I said, it doesn't actually show here. But according to the scientists, between the distance of about 0 0.005 to about 0 0.02 astronomical units, which is about 50 times closer uh, in terms of distance from Earth to the Sun, so right around here actually so let's just actually uh, demonstrate this by going into earth and manually changing its orbit to let's just start with zero zero five astronomical units and we're going to give it eccentricity of zero as well uh, so right around here um, it's very likely that things will go bad for our planet earth because i forgot to decelerate time Okay, let's try this again. This didn't work as well as I planned. So here's Earth again, and as you can see, it actually starts heating up pretty quickly, which means that at this distance of 0 0.005 astronomical units, uh, this white dwarf, the Sun, is actually powerful enough to uh, heat up our planet dramatically. 
And right away we see the problem with this theory or this hypothesis. It's also been essentially broken up by the tidal forces. The tidal forces here are a little bit too great. So uh, for Earth to survive there, it needs to um, it needs to be more dense. It would not survive there otherwise. Let's try this again at the maximum value that they actually uh, mention in the paper, and that's 0.02 astronomical units, which is farther away, right there. Um, this is 50 times the closer uh, the distance of Earth to the Sun, and you can see it. Even here, it starts heating up quite dramatically. Now, this actually might be because of tidal forces, but it also might be because it's receiving enough radiation from the star. And by itself, this already suggests that it's possible for a planet to actually have enough um, heat from a white dwarf, or receive enough heat from the white dwarf for it to sustain liquid water. So let's see if we can actually um, try to create this. Let's maybe move this Earth a little bit farther away. Let's uh, let's do like 0 0.04 thermal units. And uh, keep checking the temperature. And let's actually reach a point where the temperature is more manageable. Now, interestingly, in this game, it seems to actually not work the same way. At least um, from the way that I, I, I can kind of... Alright, it seems that uh, this particular simulation is a little bit bugged because the Earth seems to be receiving a lot of heat from the sun. As a matter of fact, it seems to act just like a normal sun. So maybe let's, uh, let's try a new simulation. Let's place a Sirius B here instead and let's try this again with similar sort of parameters. So we're going to start by placing planet Earth at 0 0.02 astronomical units. And once again, it seems to be heating up pretty quickly. And now let's go to slightly farther away distance of 0 0.09 astronomical units. See what happens. Okay, the temperature is stabilized and it's actually kind of dropping. Let's see if it's going to be higher and lower than 50. And it seems that at a distance of about 0.1 astronomical units, I was able to find the sweet spot. The Earth is actually at just the right temperature to have liquid water. It's just at the right distance um, to not receive too many tidal force effects. And as you can see, the temperature here is currently average of about 11-ish, 10 to 11 degrees Celsius, which is just a little bit colder than actual Earth. Now, this is very, very interesting. So this suggests that maybe out there, there are actually habitable planets orbiting these um, white dwarfs, and they might actually have stable enough orbits to uh, survive in these habitable areas for billions of years. And because white dwarfs don't actually change very quickly, uh, this habitable zone will remain same for billions of years again. But of course, there's a problem. And the problem is that to get this type of orbit is very, very, very difficult because of two things. One is that this is a star that used to be much more massive. When it was massive, it was also much bigger. And it's very likely that if any planet was in this particular orbit, it may have been burned to a crisp similar to Mercury. And it's very likely that it may have actually been even swallowed by the this particular star when it became... Um, a, a giant when it, it turned into a gigantic planet right before becoming a white dwarf. This is what will happen to Mercury and Venus when our sun becomes a giant as well. Earth might survive, but we don't really know exactly for sure just yet. So to have this orbit, those planets would have to be, somehow survive um, being swallowed. In other words, they may have come from further away from the star, but to change this orbit, they may have had to experience some sort of a interaction with another planet. Like, for example, in our solar system, let's say Earth may have actually uh, changed its orbit and encountered Uranus on the way. And because it encountered Uranus, it will change its orbit and may actually cause it to fall closer to the white dwarf sun. Let's see if this actually happens here. Gonna, we're going to see if these orbits change at all. Maybe we'll look at the actual orbits in more detail here. And you'll notice that it's slowly influencing the orbit of our second Earth here. And uh, so through interaction with other planets, maybe just maybe some of the terrestrial planets may have fallen closer to the white dwarf and with time circularized their orbits. But the chance of that happening is actually pretty low. It's, it's very, very low. 
Uh, you would need to actually look at billions and billions of white dwarfs to find at least one such system where a planet, through interaction with another planet, would actually assume such an orbit. So there's that very, very unlikely chance of happening. But you know what? There's so many stars out there that maybe it actually did happen. And the other problem, of course, is the fact that, well, the tidal effects here are going to be still pretty strong. The tidal effects in this area are so strong, as a matter of fact, because of the density of the star, that it, it would produce a lot of serious problems, like volcanoes, very powerful volcanic eruptions, lots of earthquakes, lots and lots of tsunamis, and potentially a lot of other crazy effects that our planet Earth doesn't actually get in real life. And so even if this planet has survived being absorbed by the star and somehow achieved this stable orbit, it would still have a lot of other problems to deal with. But for all we know, maybe out there there is at least one such planet that actually has this orbit, has all the necessary conditions for being habitable, and may have even developed life of some sorts. A very extreme life that can survive these extreme conditions. But, you know, that's all speculation for now, and that's actually all we know about white dwarfs and their habitable zones. And anyway, if you learned something from this video, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this video with someone who enjoys watching these videos. And here's a supernova type 1A, because why not? Anyway, come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully one day we'll discover if these stars and these habitable planets do exist, and maybe we'll even find one to colonize in the future. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.